The origin of life, the idea that a complex mixture of simple chemicals self-organize into the very first life forms is a central idea to the evolutionary paradigm. It's an idea that is a cornerstone idea, a foundational idea that justifies evolutionary biologists looking at all of life's history from an evolutionary perspective. Yet there is no scientific evidence that supports chemical evolution. There's no scientific evidence that supports the origin of life scenario from a naturalistic perspective. Instead, the more that scientists study the origin of life question, the more it seems as if the origin of life is actually a miraculous event. For example, the late Leslie Orgel, a prominent origin of life researcher, said this, Metabolism first scenarios, which is just one of the scenarios that scientists think can explain the origin of life, he says metabolism first scenarios require an appeal to magic, a series of remarkable coincidences, a near miracle. Leslie Orgel also said with respect to the RNA world hypothesis, which is another scenario that scientists think may account for the origin of life, it would be a miracle if a strand of RNA ever appeared on the primitive earth. Paul Davies, in his book, The Fifth Miracle, which is a book on the origin of life question, said this, Although biogenesis strikes many as virtually miraculous, the starting point of any scientific investigation must be the assumption that life emerged naturally. And so here we have scientists admitting that when it comes to the origin of life, not only can we not explain it, scientifically speaking, but it actually appears as if it's a miraculous event. Yet, the scientific community refuses to entertain the idea that God, a creator, is responsible for bringing life into existence. Well, why is that? And this is a very important point that I think helps us as Christians to think through the evolutionary paradigm and its challenge to the Christian faith, and that is this, that the theory of evolution is as much about philosophy as it is about science. And I'm going to explain in the next few minutes what I mean by that. And to begin, we need to think about how do scientists approach the study of nature. Well, there are philosophical suppositions, there are philosophical assumptions, there's a philosophical framework upon which all scientists use as they investigate the record of nature. Science is about a methodology that is used to study nature, where you posit a hypothesis and then you make observations and test that hypothesis as to whether or not those observations or the experimental results fit the predictions that you would make with that particular hypothesis in play. That's what science is about. It's about a methodology. But many scientists also add an additional requirement and that those hypotheses, those theories, those models that they employ to explain phenomena in nature uh, rely exclusively on naturalistic mechanisms. That these theories, hypotheses, models exclude any involvement on the part of a creator. This is called methodological naturalism. And it simply means that when scientists study nature, they pretend as if God doesn't exist. They never evoke the work of a creator as a way to explain phenomena within nature. This again is called methodological naturalism, and, and many scientists who are Christians agree to, uh, to, to uh, pursue their scientific investigations of the world by employing this set of philosophical assumptions. Well, what does that mean then? That means that even if the evidence is pointing to, let's say, the origin of life being miraculous, as a scientist you can never go down that path, as Paul Davies says because it violates the principles of methodological naturalism. To appreciate the power and the influence of methodological naturalism in the investigation of nature, including the origin of life question and the history of life, consider the statement made by Richard Lewentin, an evolutionary biologist from Harvard University. Dr. Lewentin says this, we take the side of science in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs. In spite of its failure to fulfill many of its extravagant promises of health and life, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just-so stories because we have a prior commitment, a commitment to materialism, 
It is not that the methods and institutions of science somehow compel us to accept a material explanation of the phenomenal world, but on the contrary, that we are forced by our a priori adherence to material causes to create an apparatus of investigation and, set a, and a set of concepts that produce material explanations no matter how counterintuitive, no matter how mystifying to the uninitiated. Moreover, that materialism is an absolute for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. What Richard Lewentin is basically saying is this is that the scientific community has a, a pre-commitment to materialism, to methodological naturalism, to only mechanistic explanations for the origin of life and the history of life on Earth. And because of that commitment, even if the evidence is pointing to the work or the involvement of a creator, the scientists cannot go down that path. They have artificially restricted their investigation of nature from allowing them to go down that path. And instead, they have to insist that the origin of life, for example, is through some kind of mechanistic process, no matter how miraculous that process seems to be, given the evidence at hand. And so this brings us to a very important point, and that is this, is that the evidence for evolution can be understood from a creation model perspective that involves the work of a creator. In other words, if we relax this requirement of methodological naturalism, what we see is that is oftentimes cited as evidence for evolution can be readily understood as the work of a creator. Let's take the fossil record as an example. When we look at the history of life on Earth, life has been present on Earth for arguably 3.8 billion years. And it's a history of life on Earth where different time frames in Earth's history, we see different life forms. We see this progression from simple to more complex. And evolutionary biologists look at this and say, this is evidence that, that life must have evolved because there's different life forms at different times in Earth's history. But if you look at this from a creation perspective, you could say that a creator on the different days of creation created different life forms that existed for a period of time and then were replaced by different life forms in the next day of creation when the creator is at work bringing about his creative purposes. And so we could see the fossil record that is so often cited as evidence for evolution is also evidence for the work of a creator. It's all about the philosophy and the presuppositions that you bring to the table. And I believe that when we look at the fossil record and relax the requirements of methodological naturalism, we're going to see that in the fossil record, the evidence for the work of a creator is more evident than the idea that undirected evolutionary processes account for the history of life on Earth.